Okay, guys, now that we know the relationships between the angles when we have parallel lines and a transversal, we're going to take a look at proofs and prove that angles are congruent using those properties or proving that lines are parallel. So here's a couple more properties that I want you to jot down in your notebook. So remember, anytime during the video, make sure that you pause the video if you need more time. This is the diagram that we'll be using throughout this lesson. So if you want to create that. So the transitive property simply says, if A equals B and B equals C, then A must equal C. So that's the transitive property. That's gonna come in handy a lot. The substitution property, if A equals B, then A may be substituted for B or conversely. Again, pause the video at any point that you need it. Let's recall our corresponding angle, angle postulate. We use that um, for the first few proofs we do today. So if two parallel lines are cut by transversal, the corresponding angles are congruent. Remember, corresponding means in the same location, like one and five, three and seven, two and six, and four and eight. Those are the corresponding angles. So our first example is we are given that lines L and M are parallel, and they want us to prove that three and six, angle three and angle six, are congruent. So let's state what is given. L is parallel to M. The reason is the given. Okay, so we can't just go into that these are congruent because of alternate interior. We have to use a few other postulates theorems to prove this. So I do know that angle three and angle two are congruent because they are vertical. So let's say angle three is congruent to angle two because vertical and I'm going to abbreviate vertical angles are congruent. I can go, I could have gone several different ways to prove angle three and six, but this is the direction I'm taking. Okay, now that I know three and two are congruent, I also know two and six are congruent. Oops, statement number three. Angle two is congruent to angle six because of what we just looked at, corresponding angles are congruent. And since three equals two and two is congruent to six, we can conclude that angle three is indeed, that is a little messy there, sorry about that. We can conclude that angle three is congruent to angle six, because of the transitive property. Okay, so that is our first proof. Okay, number two, again, L and M are parallel, so I'm going to state that in my picture as well as in my two column proof. L is parallel to M because that was given to us. They want us to prove that angle one and eight, again, I can't just say they are because of course alternate exterior angles. So um, let's do what we did similarly to the last one. I know that angle one and angle four, they are congruent because they're vertical angles. So I know that four and eight are congruent because of corresponding angles are congruent. And then, since one is congruent to four and four is congruent to eight, I can 
conclude that angle 1 is congruent to angle 8, and that's what we wanted to prove by the transitive property. Okay, let's look at number three. So again, we're starting out, lines L and M are parallel. That was given to us. We are trying to prove that angles five and one are congruent. So let's see what we know. We know one and four, one and four are congruent because they're vertical. So angle one is congruent to angle four. And then I know angle four and angle five are congruent. because we know that alternate interior angles are congruent. And so now we can apply the transitive property again. One is congruent to four, four is congruent to five, therefore one, angle one is indeed congruent to angle five. So these ones are simple and we'll get a little bit more complex. Okay, so let's write the theorem, alternate interior angles, converse. So our converses is the opposite of proving um, that angles are congruent. It is saying if two lines are cut by a transversal and the N, we know the interior angles are congruent, the alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So if they tell us three and six, these are alternate interior, are congruent, then the alternate interior angles converse says line L and line M are indeed parallel. So let's. Okay, the corresponding angles converse postulate. And again, we're going to use the converse postulates to prove lines are parallel. So go ahead and jot this down. If we know like one and five, those are correspondings. If they tell us one is congruent to angle five, then our lines L and M are indeed parallel. Okay, so what is given is angle three and angle six are congruent. So now let's take a look at what else we know. We know we can go say that three and two, angles three and two are congruent because they're vertical. We know vertical angles are congruent. So what else do we know? We know that angle If three is congruent to six and three is congruent to two, then we can say angle six is congruent to angle two because of the transitive property. So if six and two are congruent, they are corresponding angles, and if we have corresponding angles congruent, then we know that line L is parallel to line M. So this is going to be the corresponding angles converse. Okay, so we use the corresponding angles converse. So Three and two are vertical, two and six, or three and two are vertical, congruent, two and six 
are congruent, therefore the two lines are indeed parallel. Okay, alternate exterior angles converse. If we can prove alternate exterior angles, if we know that those are congruent, one and eight or two and seven, then we can conclude that L and M are parallel. Okay, so we are given the angle one and angle eight are congruent, that's the given. Okay, let's see what else we have. So we know that angle eight and angle five are congruent. Vertical angles are congruent. If one is congruent to eight and eight is congruent to five, I can conclude that one and five are congruent. So one and five. Again, the transitive property. And if one and five are congruent, those are corresponding. And if corresponding angles are congruent, the lines indeed are parallel. And this is the corresponding angles converse. So the converse proves lines are parallel. Without the converse, the original proves that angles are congruent. Okay, number six says angle two is congruent to angle six. So let's mark that two and six are congruent. So we could say angle two and three. Angle two is congruent to angle three. Vertical angles. Oops, dropped my little pad. Are congruent. And then our transitive property of two and six are congruent and two and three. And we could say angle six is congruent to angle three. So six and three the transitive property. And then if we know these two angles, they are alternate interior angles, alternate interior. So we can use the alternate interior angles converse to prove that L indeed is parallel to M. It's the converse. 